afternoon, everyone. Uh, please feel free to continue eating and enjoying each other's company. I'm J.B. Owens, this year's chairman of the board of the Lebanon Wilson County Chamber of Commerce. I'm also executive vice president at First Freedom Bank. And on behalf of the chamber and Wilson County, we want to thank everyone for being here this afternoon. Thank you for your attendance and for showing up. At this time, I would like to introduce Pastor John Hunt with Emmanuel Baptist Church. He's going to lead us in our prayer. Please bow your heads. Lord, I want to just thank you as we pause and we want to remember you and we want to just be grateful for another year of life in Wilson County. You either brought us here or we were born here. It's a very, very special place. Thank you for all the things you're doing and it's overwhelming and we need your wisdom, we need your strength and we ask that you give that to our mayor. Lord, thank you for the daily provision of food, of, of shelter, of fellowship. And ultimately, I just want to thank you that today the chamber is gathered together to celebrate the accomplishments of the past year. And my prayer, and I believe our prayer, is for the county mayor to have the wisdom as he faces the challenges of leading our county for another year. Just thank you for all that, those that are here, those that are watching, those that care to make our county a better place. And as always, we thank you for your grace and your forgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank each of you for your service to our communities and to our fellow citizens. This is the State of the County, State of the County Address, and we do have Mayor Hutto with us this afternoon. And before I introduce him, I'd like to go through his bio. Mayor Hutto is a man of many accomplishments, and we're so thankful to have him representing our county. Randall Hutto is a lifelong resident of Wilson County. Growing up in Watertown, he attended Watertown Elementary and graduated from Watertown High School. Randall earned a Bachelor's of Science from Middle Tennessee State University and would continue on with his education with a master's degree plus 30 hours in education from Trevecca Nazarene College. He began his career in education at Lebanon High School in 1984, teaching U.S. history, math, and physical education. During his tenure at Lebanon High, he utilized his passion for both young people and athletics as an assistant varsity football coach for 18 years. And he also led the Blue Devils boys basketball team as head coach for 12 years. After an 18 year career at Lebanon High School, Randall accepted the opportunity to serve as assistant schools for the Lebanon Special School District in 2003. Randall began a new and challenging career in September of 2010 when the citizens of Wilson County elected him to serve as Wilson County Mayor. He and his wife Paula have been married for 30 plus years and have three children, Alex, Megan, and Brett. Randall and his family are members of Emanuel Baptist Church here in Lebanon where he teaches Sunday school and serves as a deacon. He is a member of the Lebanon, Mount Juliet, and Watertown Chambers of Commerce and active member of the Lebanon Breakfast Rotary Club. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce Mayor Randall Hutto. As always, it's an honor to be here in front of you today, and uh, I thank you for taking your time uh, to come and, and hear about our county. Uh, a lot of important people here, and the things that I'm going to talk to you about today uh, only happen because of what you have done to make these things possible. I will recognize several people today, and when I do call your name or your, your uh, uh, picture shows up on the screen, I really wish you would stand, and, and when I finish those comments, I'd love for you to give them a round of applause if possible, because everything I'm talking about today really boils back to you. Um, there are a lot of things, and, I, and, I, and I'll say when we put this together, and I want to thank Susan Shaw, which is by my side here, an executive assistant, and Sarah Davenport and uh, Bethany Harrison, which came and set this up. Uh, it's a lot to get together. Uh, I would rather you just give me one or two topics to talk about. But when you say, let's talk about the whole county, that's a lot to figure out. So we want to do our best to be informative today. We don't want to do anything that's going to bore you. Uh, at the same time, I, it's hard to be all-inclusive uh, to get everything in here. So if I leave something out, you know, I apologize for that. But we're going to do our best to, uh, uh, to give you what... Um, is actually going on and and please know this anytime you need us to come to your organization or your part uh, of the world and, and deliver this talk or any specific talk we'll be glad to do that 
I will have to introduce my wife in the back, Paula. Would you please stand and give her a round of applause, if you will? <laughs> that is your Valentine's gift. And, uh, <laughs> anyway, let's see what we can do here. And I'll do my best to stay focused on you here. But uh, the State of the State came out not long ago uh, and uh, had a few things that I thought was important. The lowest unemployment in the Tennessee history of 20, 222 years. Uh, the growth rate in jobs here, 17% increase, over 400,000 new jobs in the private sector. Fastest improving students uh, here in, in the nation across math, reading, and science, and the highest graduation rates. And I believe Wilson County had a large part of that. When we talk about Wilson County today uh, in Tennessee, you know, you're in the top two or three of the counties in the state, and so I think we had a lot to do with that. As a region, we have to work together. Uh, you see all of the businesses there that, that depend on us to uh, collaborate together. We have a lot of people transferring in and out. So that's your workforce that goes back and forth, so we help supply that as well. 21,000 people leave here every day and go into Davidson County to work. Uh, 3,200 go to Rutherford County, and you can see the rest. We do have 4,200 coming from Davidson County here to work. So, you know, the, the commute, as we talk about, transit is important but workforce is also there. And I'll talk about it a little bit later, and I hope to not talk too fast, but I've got to, I'm going to try to get through all this and so you can ask some questions. But So uh, listen fast if you can. But as we talk about workforce here and traffic, those will come up a little bit later as well. Uh, but we need to know where we are, who we are, and where we're going. As you can tell here, it's projected that we'll pass uh, Denver by the year 2040. You're living in the hottest region in the country. Uh, I don't know if that resonates with you or not, but it's a big deal. I mean, what we're talking about today is huge when you start talking about our nation. Um, just want you to know that I represent you along with Mayor Ash. I saw him in here. I'm not sure my other two mayors are here or not, but we represent you once a month in Nashville as we meet together for the Metropolitan Planning Organization, the Regional Transit Authority, the Greater Nashville Regional Council. All of these are where the mayors get together and collaborate on things that are going on uh, in our region. And so that is an important thing to do. Uh, for us to keep you abreast of what's going on and to keep us ahead. I want to introduce these people if I can. If you're here today, please stand. Uh, Joey Carmack, Rob Sestranino, uh, Chris Crow, Stan Chris. Uh, <laughs> at least I knew you were here. Tick Bryan, Rick Bell, and Fred Burton. Uh, I'm going to go to Art. Oh, hang on one second. You're doing good, though. <laughs> I did prompt her on that one. Art Giles, Brian Abston, uh, James Manis, Ray Justice. Uh, Councilman, would you stand, Ray, please, as well? And uh, Water Kenny Martin, I don't think Kenny's here. Please remain standing, both of you, if you will. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, I would like to, if, I don't know if uh, Christy Cantrell's here, Brandon Harold, uh, Howard, uh, Katie Smith, Randy Hocum, Tom Nix, and Tony Lee. These are our councilmen, and we only have two of them here. But they do a tremendous job, take a tremendous stand, take a lot of heat. In our county right now, where people are trying to move in and people are wanting different things, they have to make a stand. And so, man, I appreciate you. Please give them a round of applause if you will. <laughs> I know Mayor Ash is here. Mayor Ash, if you would stand and remain standing until we finish these. I want to give you just a few of their accomplishments. 34th best place to live in America by Money Magazine. 4th best place uh, to start a business in Tennessee. You can see here, as growth, as we talk about how things are growing, many of you think, well, Mountain Jude is just booming, uh, and they are booming, and we're thankful for that as well. But you can see housing permits here, 562 in Lebanon, which leads the list, 31 commercial permits. Uh, Mountain Jude is just neck and neck at 409, so a lot of growth is going on. The second, uh, Tennessee's second uh, safest cities uh, here in Lebanon, number one in sales tax, sales tax still continues to be, and we're thankful for Providence. It's really brought a lot to the table for Mount Jet, but Lebanon still continues to outdo uh, every every city in our county of about three to 400,000 per year, except at Christmas, and Mount Jet uh, outdoes all of us at Christmas at that time. But so number one in sales tax there. A lot of things that they've got going on, just re uh, uh, renovations at the Don Fox Park. The new airport terminal we'll talk about a little bit later. The Sparta Pike study to talk about what's going to go on in that area. Uh, roads going through Legends Drive, if you can think about it, behind the Pizza Hut and headed that way towards 70. Uh, the West Park, uh, which is uh, down around uh, uh, South Fork and uh, Hamilton Springs, of course, is also under construction and will be done uh, just soon, recently, I mean, pretty soon. And then, of course, the 
uh, the uh, South Hartman, the, 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 the uh, terminal starting construction there, which is really uh, almost completed on that one. So um, the gasification plant that we have that you guys started, the national and international attention. So, uh, Mayor, thank you for what you do. Thank you for the stand you take for our city of Lebanon and continue to move it forward. Please give him a round of applause. If you will. <laughs> no raise here. Is Mayor Haggerty with us? I don't think he is here, but just want to talk about what Mount G, third most family friendly city, second fastest growing city, uh, first and healthiest house in market right now, ranked 15th nationally, 3% increase in their homes. Average day on the market is 60, and that may be a little long for them right now. Rank the lowest property tax uh, in the county and the first uh, most playful city. Uh, of course, I just finished the Golden Bear Parkway, uh, which is a great addition. Uh, please give Mount Julian a round of applause, if you will. <laughs> and Ray Mayor Jennings here today? No. Um, I will say that I have a good relationship with our mayors. We try to meet at least once a month if we can. Sometimes we don't get there, but we do collaborate and talk. Well, whoever will, will afford to buy breakfast for that day, we do not charge the taxpayer for that breakfast, just for the record. Watertown Mile Long Yard Sale, train excursions that happen up there. Of course, they have a lot of country music videos that happen. Uh, perfect day to get away for a summer trip. Uh, and they have one of only 13 drive-ins in the state in the first place. Uh, they want of the 10 towns that you want to get away from it all, Watertown would be the place to go. So a lot of good things happening there. Give my folks at Watertown and my hometown. <laughs> Commissioner Benata, I saw her. Commissioner Stafford, would y'all please stand? Do I have any other commissioners in the house? Anybody, anywhere? And I'm going I'm to let you hold that applause because I want you to hear about those folks. We have a great county commission. Uh, and uh, let me tell you why. Uh, there's 130 plus, of course, that are here. Uh, we talk about they have worked to put fire stations throughout this county, which uh, gave our ISO rating of a four. All roads in the county are paid. That's 800 plus miles. They passed a pay plan for our employees to make us just as good as Williamson, Sumner, uh, um, uh, Williamson, Sumner. Uh, Rutherford, thank you for that, and uh, Montgomery County, appreciate your help on that. Um, finished the teacher pay plan to help them retain uh, the best teachers uh, and retain them, of course, and I think 97% is what they've retained so far, and increased the school board membership and allowed us to have the first African American on the school board uh, uh, in our county. Put in building codes in 2011, um, built two WEMA stations north and south of Lebanon, put an SRO in every school. Uh, took care of a Veterans Plaza 1, 2, and 3, which is completed now and, and a lot of folks are using. Uh, they opened the Statesville Station just about five or six months ago, and just this week opened the Noreen Fire Station. Governor Volunteer Stars Awards they support uh, since 2011. Of course, helped do a driver's license renewal uh, at the county clerk's office, so you don't have to go stand in line to DMV, which is a big deal. The TCAT Center, which puts people out every day for jobs, and uh, they continue to work with Cumberland University and put our county employees uh, to, uh, back to education if they'd like to go. Home of the Cracker Barrel, the first official state artifact happened in Wilson County not long ago. We're the second wealthiest county, the second healthiest county, uh, the second fastest growing county in the state, and fourth largest school system, third in unemployment, and as you well know, property values continues to rise. Fifth place to get a, the best place to get a mortgage in Tennessee. Of course, we live in the middle of everything. 650 miles of 75 percent of all the U.S. market, which makes us a great place for logistic uh, companies to go. And you see several of those there. Number one in state of Tennessee as far as number of active century farms. Uh, we have a lot of celebrities that live in Wilson County. Uh, and just so you'll know, since they took office in 2010, about 900 resolutions they passed. That's to get things done. There are 25 votes for each one of those resolutions. They were 19,283 yeses, 2,058 noes. Just simply saying that their unity is there. When you read the paper, and I know that the, the media does their coverage of stuff, and, and you may hear that you hear conflict here there, that conflict is not really bad. It's kind of like competition between our cities. Nothing's wrong with that because it makes us better. But you'll see that by and large, they are on the same page in moving our county forward, and I appreciate what they do. Please thank these ladies for being here today.
We've said it from day one. There's three things that we believe are number one in Wilson County, and they're all number one in our heart, and that's education, public safety, and quality of life. Education, again, we believe is number one, public safety and quality of life. I go to education, Cumberland University, is Dr. Stum here? Not here, but they do a tremendous job at Cumberland University. And, and you know, having a college in your town is, is just not a norm for everybody. And so we are blessed to have it in Wilson County and uh, as well as Lebanon. We have a TCAT center we talked about. May Perry does a tremendous job over there. Just recently, just a, just a quick story, we were needing a place to put some election official uh, uh, boxes uh, because of the renovations and stuff that were going on there in their place. May took all of those in, has housed and forced until we get the new central office built. And so just many things that, that they have done to help us out. Baker School of Aeronautics is another educational institution. We have a lot of uh, private schools, 1,242 enrollment on that. Lebanon Special School District, Scott Benson, if you would stand. I know Mike Kurtz is with you well as your assistant. Mike, if you would stand as well. Just to let you know that uh, is Steve Jones here, Andy Brumman, or Mark Tomlinson. That's for school board members. Uh, they receive exemplary status. The school must exceed growth expectations uh, on average for all the students and subgroups in minorities, economic disadvantage, English learners, and students with disability. And they also were only one of six schools to earn the level five, uh, level four, five years in a row. Their school system is an outstanding school system. A lot of times we get confused and think they're separate. But they are just like the rest of the county schools, okay? They get every funding that our, that our Board of Education gives uh, our county schools. And they do a tremendous job. I thank you for the work you do in taking care of our students. Also for being safe for the day when you had an issue come up, you didn't bat an eye and took care of our kids. Thank you for that. Please give them a round of applause. <laughs> Dr. Rod is not here, but as we talked about, you know, things that our accomplishments are there, Two things I want you to know, we have an adult high school, which helps people get their high school diploma. We also have an adult learning uh, uh, center, which gets them get their GED. You'll see there in 2017, we had 131 graduates that got their high school diploma. Those people went on, because they needed extra credit, they got almost $2 million in scholarships. Uh, our graduates for the GED was 116. Uh, Mary Ashby, which does a fantastic job with those at the adult high school, and Miss Betty Bird does the learning center. These people help us achieve this right here, and that is a graduation rate of 96.18% and one of the highest in our state. And so we applaud those folks. I don't believe either one of those ladies are here that I saw, but they do a tremendous job. And, and you know, and they take a, a situation and turn it into something good. So if you see either one of those ladies, please congratulate them. We have a good superintendent, a great superintendent, and Dr. Wright, uh, that we work together well. Wayne, uh, um, McNeese, Bill Robinson, Tom uh, Stoic, uh, Linda Armstead, Larry Tomlinson is here. I know. Please stand, Mr. Larry. Johnny Payton and Miss Gwen Queener. Anybody of those here besides Mr. Larry? Just, just so you'll know, Mr. Larry, I won't keep you here long, but there are a lot of things that you guys have done for us, and I want you to know. Enrollment has been tremendous at 18,402. We had 1,541 graduates last year, earning almost $50 million in scholarship. That's 13, 313 Tennessee scholars. That just means that these people went above and beyond the regular guy that's there. And Sue and I are shaking her head in the back uh, because that kind of was started by the chamber back in the day. There were 607 lottery scholarships that were, won, uh, that were awarded. Uh, again, a lot of money for us folks that have children in school. They know how big a deal that is. ACT continues to be on the rise, which is an important part. Um, we talked about the rigor schedule there. And Tennessee, uh, Wilson County has more uh, Tennessee scholars than anybody else in the state uh, at 4,725. Uh, we have a lot of champions that go on here. Friendship, of course, won uh, the football championship, a lot of bowling championships. You can see there, I won't call those out. Two schools honored just recently, Mount Jiet for the silver, Watertown for the bronze in the U.S. News ranking. Uh, they were second in digital technology in the nation. Uh, Wilson County received an award there. They were nine reward schools uh, given out just recently. Uh, three of those nine across the state were in Wilson County, Glade Elementary, Stoner Creek Elementary, and Mount Jiet High School. They also won the uh, TWS, uh, the, uh, not TWS, the TSBA award uh, for Springdale Elementary uh, construction. Uh, they, of course, just recently had NASA talk to the Southside students, uh, which we thought was a pretty big deal. Because of education, a lot of people are moving here. As you can see along that corridor there, we have a lot of developments that we've already talked about, which pushes school growth to its capacity. 
Uh, you see our zones there that are, that are busting at the seams. So our goal is to stay on top of the building program. Again, just so you'll know, opened New Lebanon High School 1213, Watertown in 2014 and 15, a pre-K-2 at Rutland Elementary 13 and 14, Mount Jude Elementary, which is Springdale, 2016 and 17, a Glable Middle School is being built today, for two th which will be done in 2018, purchased land beside Mount Jude High School for a middle school and an elementary school. That land's already purchased and set aside, so it won't get taken up so we can build on that and make it a full campus. Added additions to West Elementary and West Little Middle School in 13 and 14. Tucker's, Watertown, Southside all had additions in 16 17. Glave Elementary in 16 17. Uh, Carroll Oakland in 2016. And spent $21 million to renovate the old Lebanon High School uh, into a central office. And that is a state of the art. When you get a chance to go see that, you're really going to enjoy that. It's going to put everybody under one roof there. You know, there are no portables. Uh, in Wilson County right now. There are no high schools over 18 years. You say, why does that matter? It's going to matter, Mr. Time, for those people that come after us because they want to be building schools and want to be renovated. This group of commissioners have taken on something that could have maybe been done, you know, earlier. Uh, we don't know that for sure, but but we are taking care of business now as far as they are. They are They're taking care of business. Uh, the new high school at North Green Hill, we give a, a the county commission, gave $1.5 million to the school board. The planning's in place. We're going to have, in, in, in just a little bit, probably this coming Tuesday night, a work session because we've had a lot of conversation. Is that uh, land the right land? Uh, is it going to cost $110 million? And some other questions. So we've got some folks coming on that night to answer those questions at a work session between our Board of Education, our County Commission. Uh, and then on Thursday night, we'll start, how do we fund that? And we'll do Thursday night. For the next four months, we'll talk about the different ways to fund that. That's a work session. It's open to the public. Love for you to come, but uh, we're on track of that right there. So, Mr. Larry, I thank you and the school board for what you're doing. I thank the county commission for continuing to support education in our county. Please give Mr. Larry a round of applause. Public safety, uh, as we talked about, we think is, is a huge deal. John Jewell does a tremendous job of, at uh, Watertown Volunteer Fire Department. Chris Dow, I don't believe he's here, but Chris is, takes care of the Lebanon Fire Department, and Jamie Leffman takes care of the Mount Jude Fire Department. And they all work well together. Uh, their new station, as you well know, at the 109 uh, for Lebanon. Uh, Mount Jude, of course, has purchased three acres from the Board of Education right by the Green North Green Hill School where they'll put their north station. And I know Ray has been a large part of making sure that they had a fire station in his area north of Mount Jude. Uh, there are new fire stations, uh, of course, our, our hope is is that what we did here north and south of Lebanon we'll do east and west of Mount Jigan because we've been living in their stations okay where they're at right now and we pay some utilities and stuff but we want to go east and west of that so we talked with our planning commission and they may have some land that may be possible to be donated to us so we're looking to, to do that east and west of there of course, I told you about opening the Statesville Station in November of 16, and of course, just got through with the one there. But what that allows us to do is have good coverage all around. And that, and, and we're one of the few counties in the state that have 24-7 service in the rural area. 70% of the United States is volunteer, 70% of Tennessee is volunteer, but Wilson County is one of the few, if only four, really, that have 24-7 service for our people in the rural area. Again, that is a big commitment out of our county commission. You see our staff there at WEMA. And, I, and again, I don't want to bore you with this, but I want you to know, because I think when I say WEMA to you, I think the first thing that comes to your mind is what? An ambulance, I, I, I think, I'm not for sure. But, but just look at what they do. They cross-train their people. Their guy can ride a fire truck and he also can ride an ambulance. Again, that's a cost savings to us and one thing that's important. But they do do ambulance, okay, fire service, rescue. I need somebody to get them out of a car if they have a wreck. Uh, exercise it to prepare for disaster if it happens. Special operations, swift water, we could maybe use that this morning in some of the rain floods that we had. Special, uh, special op, if we have any hazmat or something happens uh, to one of our communities there. They do event planning. Big deal was going on back when we had the solar eclipse that happened. They spent time there. You have a uh, tornado come through or a storm come through. They're going to go out and access the damage and also apply for any kind of grant or money that we could get from there. They have an EOC center, so that if there's a something big happening, fixing to have maybe a, a large snowstorm come in or a tornado, they get everybody together uh, down at their place and talk about, okay, how do we prepare for that? They have a lot of relationships with partners, as you can see here, from team and FEMA and on down the line. 
Um, they do a lot of plans. Uh, Wolf Creek Dam was talked about, you know, not too long ago, but they have plans for almost everything. A lot of warnings and notifications that they do for you, and hopefully you take advantage of. Their organization is really huge when you get to thinking about how many employees they really have. Uh, they have 11 stations, and I won't call those out for you, but you know they exist. They have 16 ambulances, 11 fire trucks, two water tanks, four brush trucks, uh, and a bunch of other equipment. They had 16,221 calls last year. 16,221 calls. So those are a tremendous amount for our WEMA. So, so just when you hear WEMA, know it's more than just an ambulance that you might see. Sheriff Bryan, again, does a tremendous job for us as well. Uh, he's in charge of the SROs, the Sheriff's Department, the jail, uh, and the courts. Uh, we have Mike Justice, the Chief of Police at Lebanon, uh, James Hamrick, the Chief of Police at Mount Jeep, and Bill Laney at Watertown. Again, those guys work well together uh, as they move on. SROs was a big deal for our commission to put in every school. And just, just so you'll know, you know, that SRO just doesn't sit over there in the corner and do nothing. Um, he had 3,896 3 conferences last year, almost 1,000 parent conferences. They taught 119 classes, attended court 75 times, and made 269 arrests. So those, they're being used in our school, and uh, uh, so I, 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 I'm thankful that we have that, and the commission has made a point to make that happen. We have a scan program which goes out and checks on our elderly that the, the, uh, the uh, Sheriff's Department takes care of there. They're all volunteers, by the way. They actually won an award from GNRC last year. The Sheriff's Department also has a Sheriff's Citizen Academy that if you'd like to be a part of, now's the time to apply for that. It's open February the 6th to March the 6th, and the Academy starts March the 6th, and so take advantage of that if you have a chance to. It really is, is very informative for you. Um, they do the workhouse. Now, the workhouse that you see, you see the guys out on the road picking up trash, okay? Uh, and, and that's a big deal for us. They have to apply for the litter grant to get that. They have actually two crews at work uh, that allow 16 inmates to work daily. They take up, pick up trash on the roads and at boat ramps and stuff. Uh, and, and we use them a ton at the Ag Center uh, to put on events out there. They also have their own garden to raise their own food for their jail, which I think is tremendous. Uh, and so I applaud him for that as well. They had several awards last year, and just for the sake of time, I won't read out those. Hopefully you can read those as I skip through them. But uh, a lot of people being honored there. Uh, they have a, a banquet as well where they honor several people. They also answered, um, housed, uh, booked inmates last year, 6,752. Normally that jail is around 404 uh, inmates uh, a day. Uh, it has gone up to 444 at one time. Uh, you see their civil process. Their calls for service was 38,378 uh, last year, invest investigated 1,160 classes. A tremendous amount of training goes into being an officer, and some of you guys are that, and so you know those are there. They do a good job of working together. All of our folks work together back when we helped with the Gatlinburg fire. I will talk to you just a little bit about so you know that we're thinking ahead. You know, our goal is going to be to build a multi-level court system where we can put all of our courts into one place. Um, we won't do this. Uh, uh, I don't know exactly when we can make this happen, but our hopes are is to build that three-level court system with an underground place for our judges uh, to, um, to to park. Because right now they may handle a case and then walk right out to their car. And in our world that we live in today, I mean, they're just unprotected. Uh, so we would like to do that. When people say I'm going to court today, they don't know if they're coming to my place, the courthouse, or the College Hills, or the court at the jail. Uh, and so that would take care of part of that as well. We would love to make an underground tunnel or something that maybe we could transport our jail prisoners over there to that to make that uh, possible to do. And, and, and you know, we bought the Goodyear property and expanded there, but if we put those courts into one place, we can take the court out of the jail and allow for jail expansion for years to come. So that's, that's good planning, we think, on our part by building one building. And also we'll clean out College Hills, which allow for court, it will allow for... Uh, a government office to expand down there. So that will be that that is preparing for years to come. And I think that's important. That I hope that you think that we're on top of things uh, at our office and that we're looking for the future because nobody wants us to build a jail next to them. So we need to stay where we're at uh, and continue to move on. But but those are our plans. Livability is our our next thing. And you know we want you. Uh, we're thankful that you're here and that you're working hard. 
Uh, but we want, we want you to enjoy life here in Wilson County because that matters to us. We want you to have a good quality of life one, but enjoy your community. You know we have the train, the Music City Marathon uh, train goes down now, and I won't spend a lot of time on this. We are working on a CMA train for any of you that want to take advantage of that. Um, we have a tremendous hospital. I know Tracy Pope is here. Uh, not for sure if anybody else is here with the hospital, but but they do a um, a tremendous job, and it and it's and it's good to have a community hospital. Um, now everybody always thinks that the best stuff is always east. I lived in Watertown, and we thought Lebanon was the place to go. Live in Lebanon, they think Mount Judith is the place to go, and Mount Judith thinks Nashville is the place to go, I guess. But so, but our hospital does a tremendous job for us here, and you know when you think about 84% uh, overall patient satisfaction. You know, that may not be as good as you want it to be, but they're making tremendous strides at that hospital. But let me show you what they add to it. It's got a ton of services that they offer there, uh, and I can't, I can't go into all those. But look at the impact they have. They had 5,500 admissions last year, delivered 620 babies there, 26,000 ER visits happened, 6,600 surgeries. Uh, but let's go better than that. They had 618 employees, one of our largest employers here. Uh, they paid in $242,000 in taxes for the state, $875,000 in taxes here. They put $41 million in people's pockets to spend uh, in our community, which is important for you guys, and they invested $3 million in where they're at. So, so I, I applaud Tracy and uh, your hospital for what you've done for us here uh, in uh, Wilson County. Yeah, the Ag Center, which many of you know about, and a lot of things that go on there. <laughs> We have a new Ag Center director. Mr. Larry is out to pasture retirement, uh, I think, and um, they probably call him more now than he did when he was there, is what I've heard. But uh, Mr. Quentin Smith is taking over there, and we do appreciate Mr. Larry and what he did for us because that was a tremendous job to, uh, that he's done over the past. But Mr. Quentin is taking over. There are a lot of things. We did rebid the rodeo. We did not get that rodeo this last time. We will rebid it again, but uh, that just came back to us. But because of the rodeo, you have the fourth largest campsite in America. Uh, and so we continue to push and try to promote that. Uh, there are a ton of events in 2018. The Dancing Lights was a hit. Uh, just off the dollar search, I mean, I think it was a $40,000 check that was given to the Ag Center because of Dancing Lights. So if you didn't get a chance to go, please uh, please try to next time. But that was a hit. And it was on territory that was rented out that's never used because nobody ever uses uses the outside during the winter time. Uh, we are working on a deal to get ice out there next year. So in other words, when you go through that, you'll be able to get out, uh, hopefully, and do some ice skating. We have a private company that's working on that. That's no cost to none of you, So, but it will be a great attraction for uh, Christmas time. Uh, Fillers Grove, which I, I hope you take advantage of, which is a neat deal to go to. The fair, you've heard about that forever. They just uh, won 34th in the top 50 uh, in North America. Uh, bigger deal. They won a lot of awards in 2017, as you can see, but they just landed first place just a few months ago here uh, at the Tennessee Association of Ferris Convention. So again, they continue to put us on the map nationwide. The Expo Center um, has been a hit. Anybody not been to the Expo Center, raise your hand. Mr. Tom, you need to go. Anybody else? <laughs> It has been a tremendous uh, deal for us, and I'll talk to you a little bit about that in a minute. But you can see that the place that we that, that, that's happened there. So we continue to push events there. My encouragement to you is that, hey, if you have an event, schedule it out there. We, we need to keep our folks at home. We are working on a train station to the right of the, the expo and also a hotel to the left that will add to uh, events there. Cedars 11 State Park, we have a forestry there that has some rare... Uh, plants and stuff in it that maybe you may have not had a chance to take a part of and we'd love for you to do that. Several uh, natural areas. We do have a parks board that's working hard. Uh, two things that they're doing I think is of great importance and Susan's been a large part of that is putting a 3.1 mile track around the Ag Center so we could use it uh, for uh, cross-country meets as I see our Lebanon principal is here uh, but all of our uh, schools could use that so uh, we're working on that and also a um, it's about uh, how many miles between Lebanon and Cedar Forest and 5 a 5.2 mile greenway that we're hoping to try to commit, which will be the first one in the state to connect park to park. Long Hunter to Cedars of Lebanon State Park. Again, this is done outside of tax dollars, no tax are <clears> involved, <throat> but it's something that our parks board has taken the initiative to do. Uh, so I think are two good things for our folks to get outside and take advantage of. 
If you'd like to be a part of a tree planting uh, event that's happening, uh, you can go to the Ag Center February 23rd at 9 o'clock. They're passing out a ton of trees and love for you to plant that to be a part. Our Veterans Center, I hope you've had a chance. Anybody hadn't had a chance to go see the Veterans Museum or Center, please raise your hand. You wouldn't raise it if you wanted to. <laughs> we have a new director. Uh, well, he's been there a year now. He's done a tremendous job for us there. There are um, 9,516 veterans in your county. Uh, right now, they receive uh, over almost $30 million in benefits. Again, that goes back into your economy, by the way, and it goes back to honor some people that took care of us a long time ago and, and almost $4 million in educational benefits. So we always appreciate our veterans and any of you that are in here today. We appreciate your service, and we hope you go and take advantage of that place that uh, the county commission built for you because they did a good job. A lot of places to eat here, 45 homemade places here that are, are not uh, uh, American Fair in Wilson County. When, Love for you to take a part of them. Amy's in the back. Amy, stand up. Uh, Amy's our new tourism director, uh, and we appreciate you being here. She has a large resume, more than I'll get into today. Her executive assistant, Ms. Penny Carroll, please, Ms. Penny, would you stand as well there? They are going to do tremendous things for tourism. If you have not had a chance to meet them and, and get with them, uh, we need you to be plugged in. I, I, and you say to me, why does tourism matter in the county? Hey, every dollar I can bring in by sales tax is a dollar we don't have to collect in property tax. And that shouldn't matter to everybody in this room in here today. So we thank you for what you do. We want you to provide some good things for us in the county. But thank you. Please give them a round of applause. For you. <laughs> and we still have on the docket to try to take care of a multi-sports park that would allow to sports tourism in the county. We're still working towards that. Economic development, we have Tammy Stokes and G.C. Hickson, which takes care of our joint economic development. I see Caleb Thorne in the back, which is the president of that group as well, and I hope I haven't left anybody out. I don't have them on my slide, but Charlie Lyons in the back. Charlie, would you stand up for me, please? Charlie takes care of the Four Lake Regional Authority. Uh, he's also a large part of economic development. That authority was put together when the... Um, nuclear plant left and the state gave money to Charlie and those guys to replace jobs and so he helps us uh, GC and them take care of a lot of Lebanon and Watertown which makes I mean Lebanon and Mount Jet which makes it easy but he kind of helps us with our Watertown area we appreciate what you do give Charlie a round of applause please. <laughs> because a new airport at Lebanon of course the JECDB has has their office there now uh, they're continuing to recruit white collar. We're doing a tremendous amount of looking at that. Senior recruitment, we think, is also important as well as far as recruitment uh, areas. We bring, you know, we know that seniors bring in volunteerism and wisdom and dollars to spend. They don't have children and they don't go to jail. So uh, those, are, those are good things. And advanced manufacturing. Uh, we appreciate Kenny Martin. Kenny Martin does a tremendous job of economic development in Mount Gilead. Uh, Sarah Hastings, she's here. Sarah, please stand. Sarah does a tremendous job for Lebanon. Now give her a round of applause. <laughs> These folks here really help us stay on top of things, and I appreciate what you do. Please tell Kenny that for me, if you would. Uh, the Chambers, uh, work, they work together well. I, I didn't know much about the Chamber before I took office, but, I, but I've noticed how they collaborate, and I think it's a huge deal, and I appreciate you doing this, and Mark will do one, I know, later on in August, but you guys do a tremendous job. Melanie's here. Melanie, please stand. I know everybody knows you, but please stand anyway. Uh, please give Melanie a round of applause. I don't think Mark Hinesley's here, but Mark Hinesley to me and Mountain Jude is just like another elected official. He just stays on top of things. He keeps us informed and keeps things going. And of course, Vicki Frazier here on the left is a Watertown Chamber president. Mountain Jude just built a new chamber office. Uh, and um, I, I would say this, you know, I, I still have some old stories about the 109 divide. Okay, you know, you hear it from time to time. A lot of our new folks don't know that, but I still have it resurrected occasionally. But just so you'll know, the awards banquet for the Mountain Jute Chamber was happened just this last week at the Capitol Theater uh, here in Lebanon. And the Taste of uh, the Wine Festival, Taste of Tennessee, happens at the Lebanon Expo. So people do go both ways, and I think, uh, uh, so some of those stories that you hear are not necessarily true. <laughs> Um, and I know Melanie and, and Mark have a tremendous relationship. They do a lot of great things together. As a matter of fact, they collaborated on this deal here, and, and Melanie's taken the lead on this, and that is how do we relate our educational folks coming out of there 
with our workforce people, uh, our, our, our industries that need people, and are we teaching the things we need to teach? She's taking a lead on that, probably going to employ somebody in that particular spot. She'll do a fundraiser completely campaign out of her organization and would allow any of y'all to give her some help that you would, would allow. Uh, but we appreciate you doing that because this is a need for us. I know a couple of other counties maybe have done it, but thank you for taking the lead on that. Just had a membership drive and uh, added 321 new members uh, to their organization. Um, economic development, I, I, I don't want to bore you with this, but it's still a big deal that you got these. Distribution, Starbucks, FedEx, Under Armour, and Amazon, big name folks that are here. People that make things, manufacture, we've got Lock and Bar, uh, Maakawa, Maplehurst Bakery, the wonderful group, which is the Chinese investment out there, Softer uh, and VG Goods. I will say this, we, we had a chance to go. The, the Wonder Porcelain Group invited me over to China. Uh, didn't cost you a dime, by the way. I keep telling you, I, I don't want to be investigated. But um, <laughs> uh, it, 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 it didn't cost you any money. Uh, they took us over there, and um, we had a, a, a tremendous time. It was, a, it was a tough deal because they got you up in the morning and didn't let you go back to the next. But we learned a lot of things from them, and, and they want to work with us. And act, as a matter of fact, uh, we're looking for some foreign exchange folks. They want to send uh, 30 students over here to take advantage and learn up. They'll pay for it all, won't cost anybody. So if you know of any foreign exchange programs that could help me get that started, that would be good. They want to send 30 students, uh, 30 teachers to Cumberland University to learn English there uh, during the summer program, and we're excited about that part. Again, they pay for all of that. Uh, they've been very good and want to be a partner. Uh, they, they want to be more than just have an, a, 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 an industry here in Wilson County. So as a matter of fact, they're coming to our house uh, Thursday night because they're in town, and so we're going to feed them. They made us eat Chinese food when we were there. I'm going to make them eat some American food when they're here, and my wife's cooking. But if you can think of anything that you would like to see us give them as a memento to take back over, please let me know that. I know that we're probably going to make it to Jud, Jud Creek to get some Wilson County whiskey. I, I don't protect that. I don't think we're going to get any to protect. But anyway, they uh, they love that kind of stuff. So we will we will add that to them. Maybe that was more than I should have said. Uh, <laughs> retail uh, again, we continue to blossom there, and you know, and Sarah and all of her group. We got we got My Place Hotel here, full service hotel in Mount Juliet. We got three more hotels coming. Those are big. We were about 67 percent full of the hotels that we had, just of the workers that work here. So when we have events that we want to have, we had nowhere for them to stay. So this is a huge deal here. Uh, a lot of new businesses in Lebanon, as you can see. I, I can't call them all out. Um, a lot of new ones coming in uh, 2018, as you read that list. And uh, so we're excited about those. Mountain Jude has, as you can tell, a ton in 2017, a bunch coming in 2018. Housing developments just continue to floor. Uh, the county on uh, the JCDB side, you can see there. Park 840 has another one, Medline Com uh, Commerce Farms, sorry, and Pennant Molding, uh, as well as Cedar Farms, and another Park 80 farm in Beckwith and Mount Juliet. Uh, Hamilton Springs, Wilson Farms, if you had a chance to see that, is a huge development. Cumberland has just off the square this Ignite Center that, that helps people that have a, an idea about making something happen on the entrepreneur side, uh, a neat little place. And if you hadn't had a chance to explore that, Hopefully this puts a, a little trigger in your mind to go by and see them. Uh, South Hartman study, I know Sarah and them just completed because of the mayor. Just wanting to make sure, you know, what we do is what we want to do on the South Hartman study. Golden Bear was just also done. They have a, 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 a direction they want to go in that area, so we're thankful for that and, and, and the planning. Uh, we'll tell you just a quick story about the Speedway. Panatoni has bought a section of the Speedway, and they're going to put uh, developments out there like Amazon, FedEx, they don't necessarily mean they'll be logistic companies, but they're going to build spec buildings and hope that people come to them. So that's, uh, again, their first section will add a million dollars uh, to your tax roll. Uh, again, when they're paying it, you're not paying it, and I think that's important. Um, we have a, lo a lot of local agricultural folks that uh, produce. We've got Farmer's Market and the Batch and Bushel that goes on the Expo. The Little Seed Goat Mill uh, Farm is out here on 231. But if you get a chance, patronize those folks. Those, they, they are hometown folks, and uh, we want them to be a large part of that. And I can't encourage you 
enough to shop Wilson County because all your tax dollars go back to service you and it's easy to ride to Nashville or somewhere and spend it. But think about it, please, the next time if you would. We're already in transportation and I'm going to be quick. I know I've got just a little time left and I'll be through with this. But we have a great road commission. Uh, as we said, all paved roads. They do work their tail off when it comes to snow and ice. Just understand, they take care of the county roads. They don't take care of city roads. They don't care of state roads. They'll find the major arteries of the county roads and work on those first, and then they'll work their way back in here. Uh, some of you people say, hey, don't waste my dollars on salt and all those people. Just let Mother Nature take care of it 48 hours. And others call and say, hey, man, when are you going to get my road clean? So, I, so we, we hear it on both sides, but they do a good job of that, and I appreciate their work on that. They're not working while the rest of us are sleeping. Uh, TDOT's been good to us. Uh, a lot of uh, things. Uh, the Improve Act will allow for the Hartsville Pike 141 coming in to be widened. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, I-40 to be widened from 109 all the way back to 70, and of course the State Route 109. There are some long-range plans there with the Central Pike and I-40 interchange uh, and those other two arteries that run long ways on that that will be there. We are a transition county. Uh, simply meaning that we have the opportunity to put on a referendum uh, if you want to. Things that we want to improve as far as transit goes. As you learned last night uh, in Nashville, they approved the $9 million, uh, I think it was million or billion? Billion, right? $9 million transit plan to go to referendum and let people vote on decide what they want. But we're one of the few counties that can do that if we would like to. Uh, I will tell you that as we look at that, you say, well, where, where are we at there? Well, number one, I think we need to know what Nashville's going to do. And what Nashville does will really affect you a little bit. If that were to happen, you would have uh, uh, frequent, more frequent uh, commuter rails on the Music City Star. 40 minutes during peak time, 60 minutes uh, away from peak time. And you say, well, that won't come into Wilson County. You're right. So what we want to do is find out what all are they doing and what do we lack? We know the Improve Act is going to give us some things in transportation, but what do we lack? And that would be what we would put out to referendum if we went that route. But again, it all hinges on what Nashville does. Now, when you say Nashville, for example, how does that affect me if we don't do anything in Wilson County? It's still, you could ride the train down to Donaldson uh, and get off and catch a shuttle bus over to the airport or over to Opryland. So that is a, that is a, is a perk. Uh, as of today, I hope you know this, you can get on the train and ride to Nashville every day, and there are tons of buses down there that will carry you all over Nashville. And you say, well, I don't want to do that because Grandma might get sick or my kid gets sick and I can't get back. No, they'll, they'll bring you back on a van. I mean, they give you five forgivenesses, I think, uh, uh, for every month. So, I mean, so don't let that stop you from riding the train. It's a great experience. But, but we are on the top of uh, what's happening in transit. We hope to continue to do that. There are some private services here. The 109 bridge, which I know you enjoy every time you go across it. Uh, I will tell you this. One, uh, I-40. What they'll do to start with, they'll go from uh, 109 back to 840. Now, the biggest problem that I get complaints on is that, hey, every afternoon, Mayor, when I get off of 840 and get on 40, it's backed up, especially Thursday and Friday, it's like a killer, and then they're all coming down Lebel Pike. Well, what this will do is allow for five lanes from 840 all the way down to South Hartman. And that way, if you get off of 840, you can stay in that designated lane. It still leaves those other four lanes to carry you on through. And so uh, this has been an issue because, you know, they finally get out of the national traffic, get up to about 70 or 75, and all of a sudden, boom, they're back down to jam lock again. So this will be a big deal for us to get that. But they'll do it in two sections, 109 to 840, uh, 840 to 70. And 70 will be the biggest kicker for us. And it should happen over the next three or four years. Uh, that's what both of those are. Uh, talk about 109. That bid was let. As you can see, Vulcan, instru Vul Vulcan Construction got that one at 30 million. Should be done by 2020, both of these really. But uh, the one will be done maybe a little bit earlier than the other one. But they're going to go to Academy Road. That bid was let, so that construction should start here in the next few days. They're going to redo Academy Road so that intersection's better and you got a lot there. Then they'll go to the new bridge uh, and come back to Academy Road will be the first leg, and the second leg will be from Academy Road over to Highway 70, so you'll have a full uh, construction um, move there. Um, there are widening uh, Hartsville Pike, 141. It's going to be widened, first of all, to Lover's Lane, and then once that section's done, it'll go from Lover's Lane over to Highway 70, and that, uh, or the bypass. And, and that's going to be a different route than the regular route, so some people have asked me what route it is. I have those plans in my office, and if you'd like to look at those, please feel free to come by. That construction, of course, has been uh, done as well. That's a $9 million project, and Vulcan got that one. 
Um, both of those are there. Um, new interchange at uh, I-40 and Central Pike, thanks to Mount Gia. The planning report is done, and so that is in the docket. That's got a seven-year window to be completed now. Uh, and uh, from Park Glen Drive to Bender's Ferry, that's on Highway 70 coming out of Mount Gia, just past the, the Tri-Green Place. Uh, that, uh, a lot of work was done by the City of Lebanon, I mean, City of Mount Gia on that one. Uh, and the signalization has already been awarded for that intersection there as you turn to go to Mount Gia High School at 136000 uh, a lot of safety improvements if you've been riding 231 to Hartsville uh, and uh, Mount Jerry, and I'm going to have to skip through some of these just so I go. Interchange uh, lighting uh, done on, on uh, Council Pike. Hamilton Springs will be done in the summer of 2018 unless Mayor Ash knows more than I do, uh, and, but that's not hard. Uh, and uh, Music City Center, I'll talk to you about that. There is a bypass lane coming there. Um, I won't get into night and weekend trips, but I will get into this. If we don't get the transportation deal done uh, and you still want more trips into Nashville, uh, you want to ride the train, but it has three in the morning, three in the afternoon, and that don't take care of you. We're working to see if Gray Line, no taxpayer dollars again, privately will work on this to where they will come in and run three trips during the midday on the buses and then three trips at night. And therefore, I could ride the train in the morning, come back on a bus at lunch, or I could ride the bus in and come back on the train in the afternoon, or I could ride the train in on the afternoon and come back on the bus at night. So we're working to see if they will work that with us, as well as trying to get Gray Line to work with an inner loop of Wilson County. Because I got a lot of people that don't have vehicle that could walk out to the road and get on that and get to the grocery store or the hospital or somewhere. But I, I will never get people to ride the reverse commute from Nashville to Lebanon or Mount Juliet to shop if they've got nowhere to get around here. So this bus loop that could go between Lebanon and Mount Juliet and then two times a day to Watertown would really help our people move people around, give us reverse commute again, What's in it for me? It's good for my citizens. It's really good for hopefully my sales tax as people come out and begin to are able to get around and go to the different functions that we have here. So that, that is all I'll say on that. We have a great airport. Uh, again, a lot of people fly in and out of there every day, and uh, they do a tremendous job. I think the bottom part of that, I don't think, is Heather Bay here? No, but uh, by the number, they got 10,000 square foot of office space over there now, 12,000 square foot of corp uh, corporate community storage. 256 acres total. Lebanon City really is, is the large player here, but we're just glad to have all of that here in our county. And, and we have talked to TDOT that as they widen that road, could we lengthen the runway? That would allow for more corporate jets to come here, again, which opens a whole new wonder for Wilson County. We have eight interchanges to the county. Economically, that's a big deal. Uh, new roads, and uh, just to be brief on the but Ritchie Brothers, uh, from Ritchie Brothers parallel to 70, going to Beckwith uh, uh, could be a big deal for us economically, and the City of Lebanon is working with some energy partners there. We're looking at one auto auction going down to um, Golden Bear Parkway, the City of Lebanon is, and again, we think that would be a good deal. That's that hadn't got a lot of traction as of yet, but I know they're talked about a new road going between Chili's uh, and Wilson County Motor Company into the new airport terminal. Uh, and Legends Drive, we already talked about from 231 behind Pizza Hut, going all the way over to the Brisket Lane project, which it goes to 70. So that is a lot of good road connections that are happening for your county. Really quick, uh, Mr. Bobby Sloan um, retired. And so we tried to put everything now under Tom Brashears in a planning organization. You cannot read all this chart, but our bottom line here is that we want to stay on top of planning, but we love to give our citizens a one-stop shop if they're going to build a house, they come into one of our places and they get everything they need to get. So that's been important for us. I'm going to skip through these. Projected growth, you can see 2022, about 153,000 here in Wilson County. Um, I will give you this stat. September 26, 2016, we've, gone 2000, we've grown 2,326 parcels, which has increased our property value here of uh, over $1 billion. And uh, again, that's big for you and, and uh, good for our economy. Uh, 2018 sales that we've got so far, about 19% is what the houses are selling above the appraisal rate. 19% above what the appraisal rate is. Um, and you can see the average price of houses here, the most that are selling, 150 to 250, and then 250 to 500,000. 440,000, uh, I mean 44,500 uh, resale properties over the last 12 months, uh, ended in December. 
Um, and uh, I'm going to move through this. A lot of development going on. I'm going to tell you that we're on top of a comprehensive plan and growth plan. Financial accomplishments, all I'm going to read off of this is you're in a double A plus bond rating, which is a huge deal. Uh, you're in company of only five other counties in the state, Knox, Rutherford, Shelby, Montgomery, and Sumner County. There's about, you have a $270 million budget for this county. 47 comes with sales tax, 100 comes with property tax. Our goal in this county is to make that sales tax equal that property tax and lighten the burden on our property owner. 94% uh, of our debt goes to education. 60% uh, will be paid off in 10 years. Sales tax continues to ride month after month for the past, at least back to 2013. Only one time that was March of December, March of 2017, it was 200,000 less, and I have no reason to know why at that month. But for the rest of the months, compared to the same time last year, it's increased. Sales tax, I've already talked to you about that. Um, I do believe taxing, sales tax is the best opportunity. Everybody pays, even our visitors. Uh, hotel motel tax, we try to make sure we've redistributed that in a positive way. Uh, the county commission passed a resolution that said, hey, when we started, we had $10,000 in what you would call a savings account for a problem that maybe would occur at some time. We had $10,000. It's up to $8 million now. That $8 million helps you to get uh, the bond rating, and we're going to go for AAA bond rating, which is only two counties in the state that have that. But they passed a resolution that said, hey, now that we've got it, it wasn't $2 million. Now they move it to $8 million. Once we've got it there, it takes two-thirds of the majority vote of the, of the county commission to spend below that. Again, that's good economics for you. It's good for our bond rating. Uh, for the first time in history of Wilson County, we 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 balanced the general purpose school but uh, general purpose uh, budget for Wilson County, not necessarily schools. And 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 what I mean by that is that we didn't spend any more than we're bringing in. Now we're working for the rest of our departments to do that too. A lot of times we balanced it with our fund balances. Um, so those are big. Again, I've already talked about that. We do want to make lower in property tax. Uh, a trend. I think for the most part our mindset is we don't want to raise your property tax. That's what you say. I think the question really becomes uh, that I wish we could get to was hey can we lower it a penny? Now my commissioner will say gosh you know we got we, we don't need we, we got it that far but but I'm thinking if we if, if anybody ever lowers it one the next commission will say can we lower it too? And, and again we've got to find okay well where's the revenue coming from? And again, that goes back to our ultimate goal, get more people to come here and spend money and go home. As I've said before, I don't care if they spend money. I don't care if they stay here, but they got to build schools, roads, and jails. If they come here and spend money and go home, that increases sales tax. And, and, and uh, to me, that's important. I won't talk about the legislation. I will be brief on this one, but many people say, I don't know what my city taxes go for. What's my, what's my county taxes go for? Well, we provide all the ambulance service, as, we say, as you see here, and those four things in the county. Uh, all the education, including 11 special school district. Uh, we have court systems. I see Debbie Moss in the back back here, does a tremendous job. Court system, general session judges, judicial commissioners, take care of all the jail, and there's no jails in the sheriff's department. No city has jails, by the way. Uh, the county clerk, register of deeds and trustee, election commission, archives, property assessor, medical examiner, veteran service officer, solid waste, all your convenience centers are funded by your tax dollars. The landfill is not, it's done with tipping fees. Health department, we give some money to. Libraries and JCDB, we give some money to. Chamber of Commerce, we give some money to, probably not enough according to Melanie. Uh, and um, we do give some to nonprofits. Uh, of course, remember all citizens use county roads to get to their city uh, and they have services by the sheriff's department when they're there. And of course, most of the county pay the sales tax inside the city, which is for the city. We have a quality of life event in your back door, which is the expo. Real quick, and then I'll answer questions. Homeless uh, seniors, homelessness is an issue here. We formed a group together called Wilson County Homelessness, uh, where we actually met yesterday, where people that are doing services for these people are actually come together, and they talk about how they can share and help one another. Um, so we think this is important for us. Emissions testing, I get this question, hey, I thought y'all passed a bill that, that, that cars with three years and, and younger didn't have to go to emissions. Well, it's got to go through EPA and all of that. It's going to be 2020 before it ever gets back to us. Access to water, 
may not be an issue for you, but for our people that live in the rural part of the area, it is. We don't control that. That's controlled by the utility district. We do our best to help them, but that is an issue here. Getting the right information out to you uh, has always been a problem for me. Uh, I want to keep you informed. I want to keep rumors down. Uh, I ask you to call me anytime you hear something you don't think sounds right or you want more information on. We want to do that. Funding schools, that's our number one. I already told you a little bit about the, the, the uh, work sessions we're going to have over the next four, uh, four months and encourage you to come to those. Um, we have lots of goals. I won't get into those, but, but I want you to know that we have things that we're working for in education and in public safety and livability um, on four different sides, solid waste and finances. We have some customer service issues, some IT initiatives, and things that we want to do we talked about to the mayor's office. Um, I want to give you a little bit of time to ask any questions, and uh, if you want this PowerPoint, please call our office. We'll get it to you. But I, w I went and spoke to a group of people as I closed at Five Oaks here the other night, and businessmen and women, and they asked the question. They said, can you give us any business advice? You know, and I, I didn't know how I was going to answer the question. But I thought about it for a minute, you know, and I thought, you know, I've learned a lot from you since I've been in this seat. Uh, and I think the thing that I've learned from you that I want to pass along and, uh, to you is that, you know, invest in people. That's your great, give, in my mind, that gives you your greatest return uh, for what you do. I know we put so much emphasis on money and things, but if you invest in people, that's important. Customer service, I think it's the second thing. Uh, word of mouth is the best advertisement that you can get. Uh, and... Uh, I was told a long time ago that uh, you know you can't outgive the Lord, and I and I and I believe that. Uh, I know my pastor's here. That was done long before I knew he was going to be your pastor. Just want you to know that. <laughs> but I believe in that, and I and, and I believe that in my my business world too. Is that if I can give to people, it'll come back fourfold. I don't want to give so it'll come back, but I give because I know that's the right thing to do. Uh, and the last thing. You're busy. I'm busy. I started doing hot yoga, uh, which is really good. I don't know if any of you have done that before or not, but it is really good to do. Uh, it, it can relax you. But I'll say this. For all that you do in your busy lives, nobody will ever come back when it's all said and done and say, gosh, I wish I'd spent some more time at work. We're at home today. All my young ones are gone. Uh, don't have anybody. I mean, they're, they're one coming back and forth. But uh, it's good and it's bad, but man, I miss those days. And, and my executive assistant in our office that was here a while ago is expected twins. And I'm thinking, man, I'd, I'd love to make that trip one more time. I know Paula wouldn't, but I would. <laughs> so I, I just encourage you to spend time with your family. All this stuff we talked about is important, uh, you know, and, 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 and it matters, but nothing matters more and spending time with the people that you love and the people around because that's why you do what the rest of it is for. Melanie will tell you that. There's some others in here to tell you that. If I don't say anything else that matters to you today, take time at home with those family folks. That's the most important thing you'll do any day. Any questions you got for me? Thank you again for having me. Is it not overwhelming when you think about all the growth and the positive things that are going on in Wilson County? And that doesn't happen by accident. That happens because of the hard work of many of you in our in this room today, and also because of the hard work of all of our elected officials. And Mayor Hutto is at the center of that, and we're so blessed to have him and his family, Paula, involved in our county in the capacity that they are. And to that end, we want to present you with a present, thanking you for everything you've done for us, Randall. two housekeeping items and then we'll break thank you so much for being here tomorrow at the chamber at lunch we have the women in the lead luncheon if you would like to participate in that i invite you to do that uh, i'm getting a, a flag tomorrow it's, at sammy B's. it's at sammy b's okay so it is at sammy b's at lunch women in the lead luncheon if you can attend that please please make it and one other item coming up at the end of this month on february 27th we have our chamber membership banquet where we recognize our members as a whole and we also take special recognition with some awards of some of our members that have done some outstanding accomplishments for us over the last year is there anything else melanie 
Yes, we want to thank the Chop House on the Green here for hosting this event and providing us with our food. I hope you enjoyed it. All right, thank you so much. You're dismissed.